Here we have a, um, a little discussion, review discussion on the concept of the mole, which is a, um, a grouping concept since uh, with chemistry, the material that we are uh, dealing with and want to keep track of are too small to count mass or find the volume of. So therefore, we have to use large groups of them to do this. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> sorry. So what we have is, um, and I talked about this in a previous uh, uh, slide or previous video. We knew the relative masses between elements, but we didn't actually, we weren't able to mass out any atom because it's too small, and we still can't. So what we do is we uh, group them together. And over the years, starting with uh, Gayla Sachs and Avogadro, uh, we've gotten better and better at figuring out how many, what the group size should be for the for particles. So today, uh, the concept is called the mole, and it's the concept in chemistry. It allows us to to count mass and find the volumes of groups of things when we can't find the mass, the volume, or, the, or one of them, count them individually. And it works on the following, that the group size that we have to get so that we can actually mass things out is six, oops, sorry, is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And that is called, actually called, Avogadro's number in honor of um, Avogadro, who <clears throat> basically was the first to um, come up with the hypothesis that this, that this is occurring. So <clears throat> if we're looking at an element, the basic unit of an element is an atom. So you would have to collect 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. What is, how big is that number? If you Google it, there's, there's videos upon videos of, of explanation of how ridiculously large 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is. You know, something like, um, you know, if an atom is a donut, it, it would, you'd fill the Earth's volume with a donut that kind of thing. Um, so if you want to, you can figure that, uh, look at that. But specifically, if you look at, um, let's say, in a, uh, carbon, the, um, if you collect 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon, um, what we find is that <clears throat> you would have a mass, or you would mass it out at 12.011 grams. Now, we don't like to use the word the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, anything. We do this all the time where we take numbers and make num uh, words out of them. You know, a dozen is 12, a gross is 144. So the number we, the word we use is a mole. So if you collect 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon, you would get one mole of carbon atoms, or atoms of carbon. <clears throat> In that would weigh 12.011 uh, grams. That's the atomic mass, okay? <clears throat> if it was a gas, it would actually occupy 22.4 liters. And that's for any gas. Any gas. Doesn't make a difference the type of gas. And there's a there's a caveat which is called at STP. And what you'll learn, uh, you you get involved a little more maybe. Uh, SP, STP stands for it's standard temp, which is zero degrees C and pressure. which is one atmosphere, whatever an atmosphere is, okay? So those are all equivalent to each other. 
So therefore, we come up with three different uh, uh, mole uh, equations. One for massing, okay? So one for massing, which we'll look at now, which takes the mass and compares it to a mole. Counting, which is um, the number of particles. which goes from, and I'll, I'll do it uh, up, from here to moles, and then voluming, find the volume, it's for gases only, of course, it's from here to moles. So again, <clears throat> we were gonna, uh, we're only going to do the first one, which is massing to moles which is this one right here. So these will be done later. Okay. So what happens is um, <clears throat> this number here is the atomic mass. And from before, the atomic mass was the average by a number of isotopes mass of the masses of all the isotopes in a, uh, in a compound, oh, excuse me, in an element. Well, that's true, and it's still true, but the mo more functional uh, definition, it is the mass you have to weigh out to get one gram of the substance. So the atomic mass is an M, is, in this case, 12.011 grams of carbon will give me one mole of carbon. And that is on the periodic table. It's the, it's the number in the element block that's not whole. For first year chemists, they, it tends to they try to be easier on you, so therefore what they do is um, they use, um, they make it simpler by saying round to the whole number. So the 12.011 grams per one mole becomes 12 grams of carbon to one mole of carbon. Gotta, be, gotta make sure that it's a, it's a conversion factor. The atomic mass is actually a mass per one mole. Okay, it's not just a mass. And the only exception is chlorine, which is 35.5 grams of chlorine. Oops, what happened? Per one mole of chlorine. Okay? So again, we'll, we'll deal with counting and voluming in a different uh, lesson. So um, <clears throat> while I, uh, while I uh, explain, um, go on and give an example. Uh, before we get to the example, there's two ways of doing it. You can do a bidimensional analysis, okay? So um, if you're gonna do a bidimensional analysis, <clears throat> your atomic mass is your relationship. And I'll, I'll show it to you uh, here by example. Um, if you do it by equation, which will be over here, which we'll, uh, I'll do a uh, second, um, you have an equation. It's the number of moles is equal to the mass over atomic mass. But you never use words in my class, so really what it is, it's the number of moles is equal to the number of grams over grams per one mole. And this is a mole. Okay? So, <clears throat> in this particular question, uh, you have to do what you're supposed to do, which is you're supposed to write out what you're looking for and what you know. So I'm going to start off with doing a bidimensional analysis. I'm looking for, looking for um, grams of carbon. 
I know um, 4.3, 5 moles. Um, so now here's, here's the, um, this is why dimensional analysis is, is really the uh, good way of doing it is your, you need a conversion factor between grams and moles, which is called the atomic mass. The atomic mass for carbon is 12 grams of carbon and one mole of carbon. Now, you, that's what I expect. <clears throat> Since I'm explaining it to you, what you've got to realize is that, that 12 grams of carbon of one mole carbon could also be one mole carbon over 12 grams of carbon. Now the question is, which one is the right one? Well, you're looking for grams, so grams better be on top of the conversion factor. So with dimensional analysis, the atomic mass is like the whole thing. Okay, so therefore, um, you know you're going to be using this one here, not that one. So we're going to have 12 grams of carbon to one mole of carbon. But you want to get rid of moles. It's nice, they're nice enough to tell us how many moles. Okay, and then you get your answer, which is um, 52 to all grams of carbon. I didn't do that in my head. I had figured it already. And you need three significant figures because up here there's three. So in the answer you need three. So it's 52.2 two grams of carbon. There's your answer. So by equation, <clears throat> the only thing here that's different is since you're looking for the mass here, this equation is good for you're looking for the mole. So you need x by itself. So you need the grams by itself. So of course in math, uh, for the simple math like this, that equal sign means do the opposite if you want to go across it. So I want to get rid, I want to get the grams by itself. So the moles is exactly where it's supposed to be, which is on the other side. And the only thing is, if I'm dividing here, I'm multiplying here. So this is my, uh, uh, my actual equation, and you have to write it like this. And then you plug in. <laughs> but if you plug in, it looks, if you plug in, this looks exactly like that. And that's why dimensional analysis is, is actually easier most of the time, because it's actually starting a couple steps in. But if you do it by equation, you have to write out the original equation in the modified equation, unless you're looking for the um, moles, and that's the original equation. Okay. Either way, you have the uh, right. Um, that's that's the answer, and that's how you do it. I, I provided a periodic table here just in case. But what ha what's going to happen with this periodic table is you're going to have to s look close enough to see it to actually be able to record the numbers. Okay. So if you can't, then you could always. Um, Either find one that you can dive into more, you know, I'll try to get one, or you simply Google atomic mass of uh, carbon, and it actually gives it to you. You then round it to the whole number. But remember, it is, atomic mass is a conversion factor between mass and mole, not a uh, mass. Okay? I hope this helps, and um, I, um, <clears throat> I hope, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you uh, you talk to me. Okay, thanks. Bye.